Okay, we might as well uh, get started on a high note there. Um, so I'm Mike Ryan, and I was the primary developer of the Contrib Migrate module you know and mostly love in uh, D6 and D7. And uh, we're going to talk today about um, where we're going with Migrate Innate. What, what does Migrate Innate mean? Uh, what's done so far? And how you can help us uh, get the rest of the, rest of the way there. So um, also on the panel today, we've got uh, Ryan Wheel. We've got Chicks, and I never, I can never. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, a, and a late edition, not on the slide, <laughs> be done, friend. And uh, Mike Anello. Uh, so um, just a, a little thought. <laughs> Uh, well, the, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, while you ponder that, I'll just say um, I'm just going to go very quickly over um, what the status of Migrate and Aid is. Um, main thing here is going to be the conversation. We're a core conversation. We're going to converse. So uh, once we're done, feel free to line up at the mic and uh, we'll talk about where it's going, where you'd like to see it going, um, any questions you have. And um, some, some of the acknowledgments, the, um, just listed a few of the key committers here. And I, I do want to point out that um, actually I, I have not uh, contributed all that much code uh, so far to the D8 effort. Uh, mainly I've been working on developing the uh, simple upgrade UI so far. Uh, Chicks has been the technical lead so far. And uh, m many other people have been uh, contributing uh, patches or contributing in other ways. Um, I want to call out Melissa Anderson, even though she isn't here. She uh, did a great job doing project management as we uh, got started on the project. So the basic idea here is that historically uh, upgrading between Drupal versions was done using the same update.php used to uh, update minor versions. Uh, it's an update in, in place. And it, as Drupal has become more complex, that process has become more problematic. Um, it, it became more and more difficult for contrib modules to keep up. And uh, it, it's in particular D6 to D7, um, getting CCK updated to uh, fields and core was a big problem. So uh, it was proposed and finally accepted the, that our approach going forward would be a migration approach. That is, what we do is rather than run an update process within your production site, uh, what you'll do is create an empty Drupal 8 site and migrate the data from your old site, old Drupal site, into your new Drupal 8 site. So um, core itself, Drupal 8 core, is going to support direct migration, not, not just from Drupal 7, but from Drupal 6. Uh, this is one of the advantages of the migration approach, that we can leap over versions. Uh, it's just a matter of manipulating data, after all, and that's easy. <laughs> And the framework that will be in core will also enable us to, in Contrib, um, import from other Drupal versions. We'll be able to do uh, side, side imports, D8 to D8, as you can do today with D7 to D7, um, and uh, Drupal 5. And if anyone's really ambitious, you can go back to 4.8 or whatever. Um, and contrib modules under this new architecture, instead of implementing update hooks, they will implement uh, migration configuration. They'll, they'll ship with YAML files describing how to transform their data from their Drupal 6, Drupal 7 versions of the contrib module into the Drupal 8 version. And uh, more complex ones may need to go a step further and implement plugins. Um, which I don't think, if they're complex enough to need a plug-in for this migration, their update hook probably would have been pretty ugly anyway. Um, 
So schedule-wise, the, the plan is that the underlying APIs, the, uh, the classes and base configuration for performing the migrations, will ship with Drupal 8.0.0. Um, I, I have started working on the, a very simple UI for doing um, upgrades with no customization and so forth, just a straight upgrade from Drupal 6, Drupal 7. Um, th that is in a sandbox now, and that uh, right now it's going to be in a separate sandbox in Contrib, and we'll, when uh, Drupal 8 is ready to go to our C release candidate, uh, the decision will be made whether or not the full the upgrade UI and the full migration framework is ready to go into 800. Uh, if you saw the keynote today, uh, Dries talked a little about the semantic versioning uh, we're going to be using for Drupal 8, which allows us to put off adding functionality. So it might not um, we we could comfortably postpone it to 810 if we are not a hundred percent. Uh, sure of that upgrade path. So the uh, the pieces of uh, the the whole puzzle. There's a basic uh, framework for migration that is part of core, the migrate module. And uh, if you know the Drupal seven migrate module, this is basically the 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 base classes that you find in the includes file in migrate as well as uh, destination plugins for core entities. And um, new with Drupal 8 is uh, destination plugins for configuration. Um, that, that's one big plus over migrating Drupal 7. We will be uh, migrating configuration such as content types and fields and so forth, uh, variables, uh, in addition to content. Um, also in core, there's the Migrate Drupal module, and this is the framework that is specific to pulling data in from a, a another Drupal instance. Uh, with the with the core Migrate module, you'll be able to pull in from uh, Jive or WordPress or anything you can now. Uh, this is the specific configurations and plugins that understand what a Drupal 6 database looks like, what a Drupal 7 database looks like. So as I was mentioning, Migrate Upgrade, that is a very simple UI. It's basically uh, prompts for the database credentials for your source site, um, what your source site URL is so it can find the public files, and uh, a couple button clicks later, you should have all your content in Drupal 8. And uh, Migrate Plus, that's uh, not, that work hasn't yet started, but it, I think it is critical to the Drupal ecosystem to have all the functionality we have now with the Migrate module available uh, as, if not when 8.0.0 comes out, as soon as possible afterwards. And that's, so the Migrate Plus will include all the parts of today's migrate module that aren't going to be part of core. It's, so it'll be the full UI, which includes the dashboard, the uh, field mapping editor, and so forth. It'll be additional source plugins, um, your XML and JSON and so forth, CSV plugins. And uh, hopefully, we, I, I expect that we will be able to take it uh, quite a bit farther in Drupal 8, especially with the configuration API that we have in um, Drupal 8, that makes it a lot easier to build very flexible UIs. Um, so a lot of people who don't have the technical ability to do a migration on their own now, um, a lot of those people will be able to do it through the UI. Uh, there'll be that much less coding necessary and uh, a lot of the migration development will be writing YAML files rather than PHP code. So where are we now? We have the Migrate module in core. We have the Migrate Drupal module in core uh, with the support for Drupal 6 sources. And uh, as I said, I'm the Migrate Upgrade 
in my sandbox. And as of about two hours ago, I've got it working again with the latest core. Chasing core is so much fun. Um, with, with one just one little glitch is that you need a core patch for files to migrate. But other than that, it uh, migrated my site. Yes, my, my personal site is still Drupal 6. <laughs> so what's left? Um, Drupal 7. We did Drupal 6 first for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, there's a lot of anxiety in the community among people who are still on Drupal 6. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you are following the epic issue about continuing Drupal 6 support, uh, but we, you know, going Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 and Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, as you used to have to do, uh, is going to be extremely painful, so we want to jumpstart that. And um, the other thing is that Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, um, the, the data structures are not that different. And of course, Drupal 6 is a little farther away from where Drupal 8 is now. So the Drupal 7 migration should be basically a simplification of the Drupal 6. Um, migrate up, upgrade module, it's very bare bones now. It needs a lot of testing in different use cases, and we need to work out exactly how bare bones it's going to be. How much information are we going to present, whether we need to add any additional configuration for that process. Um, we have not yet nailed down uh, what implementing uh, the upgrade path for contrib modules will be like. Uh, for, for now, um, you can look at the Migrate Drupal module and see how it's doing it. Uh, but we, we need to uh, document that and start getting contrib modules, working with it, and giving feedback on that process and the uh, developer experience for developing those uh, upgrades. And the number one thing is testing. There, there's um, my, my little simple blog type website is not a sufficient test. There's, you all have so many different uh, modules. You've hacked your Drupal sites in so many different ways. We, we need people to feed feed everything they can through this and find all the holes that are left to fill. And on that note, what can you do? Test. <laughs> test, test, test. And I think this is the point where Michael would like to talk a little about sprinting. Sure, thanks. Um, is this? Yeah, that's on. Okay. So uh, Friday is our big sprint day, obviously our community sprint. Um, and the focus for the Migrate and Core team uh, for DrupalCon Austin, uh, the sprinting is, is the test sprint. Um, as Mike alluded to, we're really focused on D6 to D8 migrations. Um, and a lot of that stuff works. Um, but at this point, we really need to perform some focus testing to find out, you know, does every variation of a text area in D6 migrate cleanly into D8? Um, I'm relatively new to the project. Um, <laughs> okay, there we go. So something other than text areas then, because that, that'll be fixed in, I guess, 45 minutes or so. But um, I'm relatively new to the project, so I'm, I'm very familiar with, or it's fresh in my mind, the pain points in getting, going from zero to a point to where you can test. So we've actually written some documentation that you can get to if you that second bullet point, the uh, click the start here link on the imp group on groups.drupal.org. Uh, there's a link that leads you to a page that basically describes kind of in the big picture what you need to do if you want to help us test. And I broke it up into kind of two um, big things you can do. Number one is get your system ready, which is get a D8 clone, get the latest version of Drush installed, get a fresh D6 site up and running. Um, I think those are th and PHP 5.4 in order to run uh, Drupal 8. Once your system is ready, at that point, um, you know, find one of us. Find either you know Ryan or Brent or myself, or find us you know in person up in the sprint room. I think sporadically between now and Friday, one of us will probably be there. 
Um, you know, most times Friday for sure we'll all be there. Um, you can find us on Pound Drupal Migrate. Um, pretty much any time. There's a number of people who aren't here in Austin who are going to be helping as well. Um, but the idea is that we need people who, um, you don't have to know PHP. If you can get your system set up to run these migrations, find one of us. We will help kind of show you how to do it. And there's a couple screencasts there to kind of walk you through it the first time. Um, but the idea is that we will kind of assign you something to test. So obviously, uh, a lot of what we're, what we're all focused on when we do migrations is, did my nodes and my fields come over? So um, in addition to CC, um, I'm sorry, D6 core, we're also um, providing support for um, CCK, uh, basic CCK fields or CCK core fields, as well as the link field. So we're testing all of that, those things. Um, and one thing you didn't mention, hopefully if everybody knows, something that's different about um, migrate in core as opposed to different uh, or previous upgrade paths is we are migrating not just content but configuration as well. So you don't have to set up your D8 site with your content types and your, and your fields and do any mapping. You can basically do a fresh install of D8 and migrate from your D6 site and you know the, the goal is to migrate all of your vocabularies, all of your terms, all of your content types, all of your fields all of your field configurations, and pretty much anything else that's in D6 core. So I don't know how many migrations are there total right now. There's, There's about 90 or so. Yeah, 90 different migrations. There's one exception, though, that I got asked at a previous presentation, which is views. Views is like configuration, but it's kind of like you might want to just re-implement those in right. most cases. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not there yet. Um, or will it be there? We don't know. So, um, Good. I'll add. Yeah. One more note, um, if you've never installed D8 and you do plan to attend the Sprint on Friday, there's a session in the morning from 9 to noon, I believe, and mm -hmm. there will be volunteers with gold shirts, I'm told, um, and we have environments that are ready to go that you can download uh, using VT Sync, so we don't have to use a lot of external bandwidth, um, and those people will help you get set up so that you're familiar enough with onboarding to D8 that we can then transfer you over to a table where there's migrate people. So if you've never used D8, look for some volunteers and then proceed from there. And uh, one other thing was uh, you need the latest Drush and it needs to be like Drush 7 dev. So um, that involves installing Composer as well. And so those mentors will be able to help you get that stuff ready to go because at the moment we do need to use Drush to do the migration. Um, of course, because this is going to be Drupal 8, it's a product that you're getting. The migration path will, will be 100% supported in the UI, but at the moment, we still need Drush, so be forewarned. <laughs> right, so I think the only thing we didn't mention is um, hopefully if you do plan on contributing and you want to stick with it, we do weekly uh, Google Plus Hangouts every Thursdays at 6 uh, Eastern, and I live on the East Coast, so I can't calculate time zones because I guess I'm very East Coast centric. Um, yeah, and that's it. So uh, the, if you're interested in contributing, put yourself in one of those two groups and those two last bullet points and be there and we'll get you going and um, hopefully it'll be pretty smooth. So thank you. And I apologize, I have to run out in a minute. So I, I apologize, I don't want to seem rude. <laughs> yeah, a very important man, he's double booked. Uh, one, two more things that I would like to note one is that uh, there is one configuration, the very important configuration, that we never get migrated. It is impossible to migrate, and we will never do it. Uh, and it is your modules. Uh, you need to <laughs> enable your modules yourself. Uh, if you think of it, it's a, it's a kind of a chicken egg problem, right? You have a contrib module. The only way that it could run its migrations if it's if it is enabled, right? So for this reason, module the module list is a configuration that is not migrated. Unlike views, which which could be migrated, it's just not it's just it's just not written yet, and 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 I can't guarantee that it will be written anytime soon. Maybe somebody will take the effort. It's a huge mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is uh, just a sec. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if you are on the other hand somewhat familiar with Drupal coding doesn't really need to be deep Drupal 8 knowledge. 
We will need people who take the results of the testing on Friday and write automated tests out of them. These tests are going to fail, but once you have failing tests, fixing them is very easy, I tell you. Uh, one more note is that I think maybe this was mentioned briefly earlier, but there's a lot of things now that are in core that were not previously in core, and like um, one example being a lot of the multilingual support, and there is plans to support all that stuff that was previously in contrib. So we're actually grabbing a lot more data than we were previously, so um, there's aspects that will need to be tested in the future as well. Uh, and for any questions, because we are recording, please line up at the mic uh, and ask uh, uh, there. So, okay. any questions then? Well, in just a second. Um, besides uh, this week, sprinting this week, uh, going forward, um, we will need um, help testing and uh, extending the uh, migration system over the next several months. So coders, um, the all this migration work is under the migration system in uh, the core issue queue. Uh, some of the stuff that's uh, not quite ready to be integrated into core, like the Drupal 7 support, that development is going on in the imp, imp sandbox and the simple UI in the Migrate Upgrade Sandbox, there are links to those sandboxes uh, from the um, GBO IMP group. And again, go in there, whatever sites you have around, sites you've abandoned, um, anything you've played around with, give it a try, and if you have any trouble, um, let us know. Uh, drop, drop an issue in the queue or uh, ping us in the Drupal Migrate IRC channel. I, I will let me add. I will say, search the issue queue. Obviously, it's a you know, yeah. um, because there are known issues. I mean, like the link link fields. I can tell you, don't migrate yet from six to eight. Um, it's a known issue, and there's an upstream patch that's in core, um, and there's an issue open for it. Um, and you know, Mike mentioned the the file fields. You know, don't migrate yet, but. Um, there's a lot of little things like that that we know about, but what we're looking for, uh, as CHX mentioned, is our Mike, um, you know, we're looking to find the holes that we don't know about yet. One more patch I'd like to point out that if you set up your D6 instance on your local machine with different database credentials than your D8 instance, oh, there's right. a patch for that. So um, if you are stuck right at the start, please ask and we'll direct you to that. <laughs> nope, there, that's it. Hey, thanks a lot for great module. And so it is quite new to have Migrate dealing not just with content, with, with the configuration or the structure of the site. And usually we take the opportunity to of the migration to do away with the crap that didn't work mm -hmm. and, and just maybe figure out a better destination, a better structure while preserving the content that is worthwhile. So how separate are these two things in this migrate module? Yes. Well, extremely separate. Uh, one of the big advantages of the migrate system compared to the uh, upgrade system is that this is extremely loosely coupled. Uh, you can run basically each of these 80-something migrations separately if you want. Uh, this is this was extremely important. It is very easy to change them. It is very easy to just run as few as you want. Because uh, what we wanted was exactly a scenario like this, so that you actually have a very good uh, start, a base. Uh, it, it also gives you a good base. Uh, there will be, I suspect, there will be very, very few people who actually run every <coughs> migration with the simple UI because very often that won't work for the cases you say, you know? You had a site, you built it uh, seven years ago, maybe you want to rebuild it now. Yeah, the, 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 the Migrate Plus module in Contrib will be uh, your go-to when you want to uh, customize your migration. 
Um, one additional thing that exists that was in D7, but I don't think was as often used as I suspect it will be in D8, is there's a hook that you can tap into that in D7 would affect your registration array. And um, so you'll be able to affect some things that way without actually having to roll your own custom, like, migration. You'll just, uh, you'll be able to affect some of the settings. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm hoping you can speak to two popular requests that I get um, doing Drupal 7 migrations and if you expect this to continue to be a popular request in Drupal 8 since it's in core. The first is migrate so cool, everyone wants to use it to consume everything. So, oh, I have a CSV and I'm going to consume it every day, I'm going to write a migrate, or here's my XML. I want to consume it, forget feeds, that takes forever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do migrate. So I want to know if that's anticipated, that yep. that's going to continue to be a thing, and, and if there's anything built around um, in anticipation of that. And secondly, related, um, the system of record. I, I, <laughs> I hear this a lot, that mm -hmm. um, you know, it would be really great, we're building a new site, would it be so awesome if we could just keep migrating every week until we're done. Um, mm -hmm. So system of record is in changing the, the destination. Are you anticipating that? Uh, are you trying to put a stop to that? Well, the system of record, um, for those who don't know, the um, Contrib migrate module has a concept of defining a migration with a system of record being the destination. That is, you take, rather than taking the source data as the definitive uh, definition of your node or your user account and so forth, and always overwriting it completely, the destination system of record, in theory, allows you to say the Drupal side is the definitive data except for particular fields that you're going to overwrite. And the the implementation of that in Drupal 7 uh, Contrib is not very good. It's, it's, it's pretty shaky. So um, we, we haven't addressed that yet, have we? No, no. It, it, it definitely needs to be rethought. It, it's, it has its place, but uh, we haven't figured out how to cleanly uh, implement that. So what Drupal 8 does, at least for entities, but all your data is going to be entities, so that's not a problem. That it is overriding only the fields that you specify in your configuration. So this is already, th I feel that this is solved. I think this is actually solved. It, it'll just work. Yeah, it just works. <laughs> we need someone to test that. Um, another note for testing that is probably a good segue from here is um, there, the rollback functionality and things like that are not yet there, so expect that you will have to re-migrate. And when we're testing and you're like, okay, I've added a new node, yeah, uh, reinstall Drupal 8 and <laughs> then run it again. So keep that in mind. Um, we're not really doing iter iterative migrations at the moment. And I think some of that stuff is planned to be in the contrib modules if I... Yeah, a anything that's not in core will be in contrib. Right right now, um, I, I do a lot of Drush SI. <laughs> um, actually, well, that's... Let me take the opportunity to take a risk here. <laughs> Famous last words. No uh, live demos. <laughs> well, this is... Oh, well, well, different formats, yeah, that's definitely going to be in Contrib. I, I, the context of that, was, though, was not the fact that there are different formats, but that is a continuous migration, right? Yeah. And, and that, that should continue to work in terms of, you know, when there's new content in your source, that gets pulled in. Uh, so, oh, what's... Uh, let me show you what I've got for the simple UI, which is very, very simple. Uh, this is 
with a uh, git pull of Drupal core from like three hours ago, so it might be broken if we pull again, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, so we're starting here with an empty site, no content. And only the d standard profile article, basic page, no fields, and so forth. So like uh, the traditional update.php, install.php, um, the path for the upgrades is uh, at the top level. And uh, oops, I, I didn't mean to click there. Note it is not update.php, it's just update. Oh, in B8 they finally changed that. Oh, they fixed it? Or, or, or you? I was just lost a few days ago when I was like, where did the path to get to the migrations go? So it's just slash upgrade. Right. So um, you, you get your database credential form, and this is actually reusing the install form. You know, nice thing in Drupal 8 is that we've got an object-oriented form controller and the install system now implements a class that we can override for our purposes here. So um, works just like when you install. I'm going to install my, oh, I should, I suppose I should show you what I'm importing. My my site such as it is. Um, I've gone from posting about once every two years to posting about once a month, so I'm getting much better about it. See, that one is how many years old? Ooh. <laughs> All right, so credentials and um, the address of the site to find the um, public files. And the the plugin, the file plugin will use the domain and the public file directory configuration from the Drupal 6 site to figure out where the actual files are and import them. So it's really, really simple. Two steps. First, let's import the configuration. And so this will um, get all your settings that are in variables. It'll set up your content types, your fields, your vocabularies. Do, 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 do. Yes, I do. And they're the same credentials, so I'm not running into Ryan's problem there. But you know, they could be separate. In line in the body or image mm -hmm. fields? Are they image fields or in line images in the body? Um, well, we're, we're migrating the files from the files table, the D6 files table to the file manage table. We're yeah. pulling the physical files over. And um, the image references just work. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so we got our config and you know, this is one of the things we want to get feedback from people is how much feedback do you need here. Uh, temporarily, we're using the watchdog to log what we've done and very minimally. And one thing we know we need to say more than that. It's not really useful. And the reason for that here is that I don't have the profile module on the D6 site. So what we really want here is to skip the user profile migration. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, let's do the content. Well, um, it, it doesn't usually <laughs> stop there. <laughs> Oh, okay. You know, a couple missing files. I, I've never seen a website of any size where there weren't files that were mysteriously missing when you went to migrate. <laughs> do, 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 do. I have a question for Mike. <laughs> okay. So without the Drush, um, I mean, the D7 version for Drush 
allow, I'll let you run really long migrations without worrying about memory limits in the batch. I think you recommended using it over the batch API. Mm -hmm. Since we have to support the UI in eight, um, do, is there a plan for really long migrations or? Um, well, the it should the UI should work like it did in seven. It should do um, you know break it up into batches that fit into the you know PHP max execution time. And if memory is running low, it should create a new batch. Uh, and it's slow. It will be as it is in D seven slower than running in Drush, but it should work regardless of how large the site is. Okay. But if you got a big site, you should be using Drush. And you and in um, in the D eight world, you'll probably want the um, migrate plus module, which will give you a lot more tools for selectively running your migrations and so forth. Huh? I just a little bit slow this time. Here we go. Question: Does the uh, D6 uh, source site have to be upgraded to the latest uh, minor uh, D6 version? Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a complicated. This is an extremely complicated question that doesn't have a simple answer. How migrate works? You need to understand it runs queries against your database tables. If your database tables have the same structure and in the case of configuration the same meaning, then we are good. So it is entirely possible that you can get away with an uh, order drawable because uh, either there were no changes or the changes were immaterial to us. You know, there are changes when a column gets longer. Previously, we had only 64 characters, and now we had uh, 128. That such a change is immaterial because we do not migrate data, uh, table structures. Maybe we added an index to make Drupal faster. Immaterial. If we added a new variable, and that's a variable that we want to migrate, which happened in one of the seven minor versions, if you remember, that we split the field bundle variable up, then you need to be there. So the safest is always to go to the latest, but we actually put in some effort to make people, uh, uh, to let it people avoid it, because the whole point of the exercise is that we presume that people are stuck on six. So there is not a, a simple uh, answer to this. But in short, y not always. You are safest. You can try. You can try, and most of the time you will succeed. To follow up with that, is there any issues for having a check kind of run beforehand to look for those instances? I mean, it's obviously defined that you're checking for certain, say, like a column name changes. You know, you're checking for those things. Is there any thing that, sh or should someone post an issue that said, hey, we should have that? I would say just try it out. Like you're gonna, you may have to remigrate anyway. So <laughs> like keep in mind that you'll have to remigrate possibly. <laughs> um, one thing that we do want to highlight with testing is that if you've previously upgraded the site, so let's say you have a Drupal six site that used to be a Drupal five site or a Drupal four site, there could be some data integrity issues from those past upgrades, and those are the sites that are probably going to have the flakiest data structures, if at all. So um, if you have sites that you know were previously upgraded, those would be really great candidates for testing in your own, um, on your own environments and then posting bugs and explaining the history of the site if you suspect that it might be 
uh, you know, some oddities in your data structures. <laughs> that was a cool example. Could you show um, the granular migrations? Because this has bundling everything in the both the structure and the content. Could you show this, the either the UI or in Drust where you have broken down in in the individual items, please? Well, we we can look at the uh, logs that list all the migrations that were run. If you were to go into the migrate Drupal folder, there is a config folder in there that has a list of all the migrations. So that's another route you could go. Oh, we got a got a notice there. Maybe we should do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, well, this of course this is in reverse order. But you can see the configurations. Um, basically, variables and upload to do, do, do user profile, which of course failed. Da, 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 da. And then the content, you'd see we um, had those two warnings, files that no longer exist. We, but then we, overall, the file migration succeeded, taxonomy terms. Uh, so you can see the granularity here, and it is actually um, th there. There are a lot of migrations <laughs> to get. The, the all reason the I ask is because order sometimes matter. Like you probably need to migrate first a vocabulary, first a user, the files, the vocabularies, and then a content type. Or yeah, th there's a there's a dependency system. So that you have all that, and yeah. and sometimes it's wonky. Like I mean, you have the chicken and egg things and the stuffs and everything worked out, but sometimes it mm -hmm. just I feel like I need to um, select some. Other, maybe the system has organized my migrations, but I I know better because <laughs> it's not working, and I need to either update a migration or do things like that. Well, the, the migrations are all defined in YAML files. Um, the D8 configuration, like the, uh, the block migration here. And the great thing about the D8 configuration system is you can override configuration. So, you know, it won't be in core, but the Migrate Plus module will let you um, edit the configuration of your migration, save it to your active migration, and thus override. Uh, the defaults here. So he here's your dependencies. So so you see that the required dependency means we can't run this one until that one runs. Um, the equivalent of the old hard dependency. Optional means we want it to come after it. So that's the old soft dependency. And actually that that's something we didn't talk about but it's you know, all those add field map mapping calls you used to have to stick into your constructors and so forth, now it's all just um, YAML. It's just write your source field in your um, destination field. Let me see. And that's an unusually complex example there, but okay. Destination field theme, source field theme. No, we didn't taste it. Yet. On the Drupal 8 side, your your me menu um, or your block label is going to come from your Drupal 6 title field. Boom. It's, uh, you know, th this really lowers the barrier of entry for people developing migrations compared to using uh, fluent APIs and constructors. So, any any more questions? All right, thank you for your time. <laughs>